All right, I guess we're gonna try another episode of uh, Pax Unmasked. I'm Pax. This is Jay, man, and he just got caught up on Bad Batch season one. Mm -hmm. What do you think so far? I think it was great. I mean, the destruction of Camino actually on on uh, screen was uh, uh, spectacular, and then the result of Camino's destruction in season two just absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I know. Like everybody, everybody knew that happened. So now you get to see it, actually how it happened, what happened during it, the whole Bad Batch was there when it happened. It was very dramatic, I enjoyed that. With the uh, destruction of Camino, I mean, just the, the whole way that episode, that two-part episode was uh, crafted, them escaping from the sun, the sinking city, the, uh, the kind of development of Crosshair, as you said in the last episode, is something that you really enjoyed. I mean, I think that was a pivotal moment when he uh, basically started forgiving the Bad Batch for abandoning him and, and just even the look on uh, or the the other side of that where you realize that technically the Bad Batch uh, did actually abandon him and then actually pay, plays into some some development for Hunter as well as a leader he he, he wronged uh, he wronged Crosshair so I found that to be quite interesting right there was some really good moments there yeah. like when they kind of merge right in front of him yeah. and then some of his moments, his lines like, oh. I was one of you. You may have forgotten, but he I haven't. Say, he was like, that's why I'm going to give you, you guys a, what you I'll never give gave me. A Jeez. chance. And then I was like, oh my god, no. Yes. And then the, re then the revelation yeah. that he had already removed his inhibitor chip and we spent yeah. this whole time thinking that he's just doing all this evil shit because, he's, because his because inhibitor chip is there and it's not there and anymore. It's not there and that's just who he is. Yeah, he's just yeah. a jackass. Yeah. <laughs> and and Tech, Tech mentioned that too. He's just, that's part of his character. He's not yeah. going to be able to change it. Yeah. yeah. I actually really like that too. And, you know, like, I like the fact that they really addressed that and that's just who he is. I, it was just so good. And to see uh, Cad Bane make an appearance, always, always enjoy Cad Bane. Yeah. To yeah. see Cad Bane make an appearance was great, and his fight between him and uh, him and uh, the first Star Wars appearance of uh, uh, not the Book of Boba Fett, Fennec Shen. The battle between yeah. Cad Bane and Fennec Shen Fennec was Shen. excellent. But they also meet Harrison Dula during the whole first Finn ba Bad Bash thing. And there's that whole thing with with Harris and Dula and what oh yeah that and was the Bad Batch rescuing her parents that was oh great. yeah so there's so much going on in the Bad Batch that it hooks over to um Rebels to Rebels which also hooks hooks into the well the sequels which nobody likes but I think it's really important to touch base on some of that stuff but that goes back to our our earlier point I think what they're trying to do with the Bad Batch um uh, Rebels the uh, the Mandalorian uh, all the way into Ahsoka is they're trying to fix the uh, sequel movies uh, trying to explain some of the major plot holes like how did Palpatine yeah. get cloned and yeah, I haven't got far life. enough uh, to, yeah. to answer that question I'm sure to somehow we did it you know yeah, exactly <laughs> right but I mean, uh, the introduction of Tantus uh, as a facility is actually really quite interesting because in the original uh, Legend series, they actually um, brought up Tantus as a base for Thrawn where he um, built a clone army, which I mm. think is kind of interesting because maybe, maybe that might uh, lead us to the... Uh, to one of the bigger mysteries in the Ahsoka series, which is the identity of one Enoch. What do you mean? Well, I'm thinking, what if Enoch is one of the Bad Batch members. Yeah, Jack. What if it's Crosshair? Or, even more controversial, what if it's Omega? Holy shit. Because if you look at Enoch's, uh, look at a picture of Enoch's um, uh, um, um, uh, robe area on the bottom. Yeah. And then look at some pictures of, uh, later pictures of uh, Omega. There's some similarities there. I'm just throwing it out there. But I mean, it's like, wait, Omega, is she dead then? Because this is like Project Necromancer. Is it a clone of Omega? Well, I, we don't know that Enoch is actually dead. We assume he's dead. But there's some dead Bad Batch members though, too, right? Yeah. Like, Tech might, is... Well, I don't know. I haven't made that far yet. Holy shit! Oh <laughs> my god! No, so... spoilers. It's fine. Well, no, when he's he he might he might not be. You know, he's just in that. You know, who would happen to him situation? You know, so. But I was just thinking about that. I'm like, because of the way that the Bad Batch is developing and the way that they're really leading into the whole clone thing, which is another part I really find fascinating about this: the disillusionment of the clones. 
um, based on what happened during because they were they were all really loyal to their uh, to their Jedi generals and then they were forced to kill uh, their Jedi generals yes. and then they're slowly finding out that they were forced to do this against their will right. they're slowly finding out that they're expendable and at the end of the day these are actual people and that's the really cool thing about this uh, series is they're talking about clones mm -hmm. and they're making us feel for clones <laughs> right people who are who should in theory or yeah. in the original star wars were always just this generic who cares uh uh type number on a piece of paper and they're really developing and making you feel uh feel bad for all these uh, all these clones and uh, that seems to be one of the one of the prevailing themes is uh you know uh, trying to get uh an army that's uh, mm -hmm. uh 100% loyal because eventually they they stop being loyal after a while once they become more disillusioned with what's happening and what's yeah. going on. So. I always thought it was fascinating. Clones strive for individuality, right? They always gave themselves different numbers, different nicknames, just to be different. And in that first season of Bad Batch, one of the clones refused orders, went to help the Bad Batch, told them there was a trap coming for them, you know? This kind of their willingness to choose the, well, the group and go against the, the one the one thing that seems to be very prevalent though is that they consider themselves a family like a brotherhood of uh, a brotherhood mm. right so they're extremely uh, loyal to each other so i'm wondering if that uh, that could be that's one of the reasons why i was kind of thinking maybe enoch is crosshair because crosshair seems to be very loyal he is not loyal to anyone else but he is seemingly loyal to his clone brotherhood and with the when in the the Star Wars Legend canon, uh, when Thrawn takes over Tantis, he uh, he makes uh, he starts making clones, which means that he's kind of in favor of that. And Thrawn is a master manipulator. It's one of the more interesting things about him. He, he his manipulation and political uh, subterfuge is on on the same level as uh, Palpatine. It's possible that he convinced uh, convinced Crosshair that he yeah. was all about the clones. That he he thought the clones were the wave of the future. So with the Crosshair looking for someone who is involved in the Empire because he's extremely loyal to the Empire and and who thinks that the clones are the way forward, it is very much so possible. Having said that, however. Uh, Crosshair tends to carry a sniper rifle, and yeah. none of the pictures of Enoch have, have shown a sniper rifle. Yeah, so I, I don't would, know if you would change that. And I would expect some sort of like crosshair signifier on yeah. him somewhere, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, I mean, but I mean, he, I think he'd still be a bad match member. Like, why not? That's just one of the fun things about Star Wars, though. It's always, it's always uh, the uh, the idea of try, trying to come up with theories, like. One of the reasons why I really liked the uh, first uh, a movie, uh, uh, the first uh, movie in the the trilogy, the last trilogy, um, was um, because they had they introduced Snoke, and I always thought that Snoke was an interesting character. And the reason why I thought Snoke was an interesting character is because we didn't know who he was or why he existed, right? And mm -hmm. we find out later on, and it was kind of a disappointing letdown because there was a lot of really cool theories, like one of them being that he was Blagueus, which is a very interesting character, Darth Blagueus, which is uh, Sidious's master. Ooh. So, but it never, uh, it never turned out. I mean, it's still possible he could be a clone or whatever, but you know, just, just things like that is what makes it interesting. So Enoch as a character from Ahsoka is very interesting because we just don't know who they who they are, who they might be. And I, I like that. Uh, I like that part of it, like the, all the connections uh, that Star Wars tends to have, like all these revelations and interesting things that come up and happen. So it, it makes sense that they're doing this here too. It makes sense that like if they can clone things, that they'll want to clone something that can take metachlorians. Yeah, and I didn't know that. Yeah, you're, you're spoiling stuff again. Well, I mean, it makes sense though. Yeah, it does. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, like they're just going to have the most powerful type clones or whatever they could possibly make yeah right? they're looking for ways to they're looking for ways to make force sensitive clones that right. that can actually use the force because they can i mean you look at the original clone wars the reason why they they were so successful is more because of the jedi generals and less because of the clone army yeah. the clone army certainly helped and they were are very effective but without the generals a lot of those um, a lot of those battles could have been lost so if yeah. you can make a an army of uh completely loyal uh here's a question though so if Sidious makes a bunch of clones that are uh, that are force sensitive and makes them uh, makes our uh, dark side users, uh, would they be Sith? Would it break the rule of two? I would say they'd be like blasphemous in some sort of way, right? Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. Like and then, that and seems very. And the whole Sith 
uh, Jedi thing is m more like a religious take on the Force. Here, here's a here's a follow up question. Um, they, you know, uh, making clones with midichlorians, if you will. Um, is it possible that uh, the uh, uh, the Knights of Ren are simply clones that are Force sensitive that they were actually successful with? Because we don't know a lot about the Knights of Ren. They're merely brought up in the uh, yeah. in, in the the sequels, but they never really explore. Or look the into first that. version of them. Yeah, you know. Uh, th that's always a possibility because right now with the Bad Batch leaning into the, these things, they're really leaning into the heavy uh, idea of cloning technology and clones in general. Yeah. So they could be, they could really lean into that, and they could actually make some of the some of the sequel trilogy actually actually kind of interesting, right? Yeah, with all the possibilities there, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's what it leads into, right? Palpatine, they'll explain all that. So then it would actually make all a lot of sense, you know? Like, so you don't have to go right into the into the sequels, hopefully not.